Galtier's PSG is storming up the charts as you'd expect PSG to do. Their new, I guess it's a 3-4-1-2 type of system, has been doing very well with a few hiccups along the road. But how will it do for our three teams in the Premier League? Let's find out. So yes, Galtier's PSG tactic right now looks to be somewhat like a 3-4-1-2, uh, at least from what I've been reading. I am not following up on, you know, French football, so I don't know specifically what he's doing or what those tactics are. But from what I've been reading, like I said, it looks to be somewhat of a 3-4-1-2. For FM, however, FM Tactics Fanatic has created a PSG Galtier tactic, and it looks like this. So you have a goalkeeper in defend, you have two central defenders in defend, and a libero in support centrally. You have a wing back in support on the left, you have a complete wing back in support on the right, a segunda volante in attack on the on the left, a regista in support on the right, a shadow striker in attack on the in central spot, an advance forward on the left in attack, and a false nine in support on the right. It is a custom style, mentality is attacking, in possession fairly wide, attacking with, approach play is pass into space, tempo is higher, passing directness is standard, low crosses, in transition, counter press, counter and roll it out, and then out of possession, a high press line of engagement, a higher defensive line, trigger press much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and step up more. Now on the Steam page itself, on the workshop where I got this from, he does not have any information, no descriptions, no nothing from it. However, he does show some data hub pieces, he shows uh, some of the schedule. So he does show some screenshots of what happened with his side. Uh, unfortunately, there's no in-depth description of anything you need to do. Uh, change it up for home games versus away games or higher teams versus lower teams. Uh, so the only thing is schedule. He's got one draw. Well, actually, he's got two draws and a loss. So it's actually the second half of the schedule. Uh, and it does show him being kicked out of the Champions League by Real Madrid. So take that for what it's worth. But we're going to take a look at how it did for our teams. And unfortunately, not the greatest. All three teams in 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, 58 for Newcastle and Tottenham, and then 55 for Wolves. Overall, it's I wouldn't probably look at this as a starting point of a tactic, but there are definitely more that you know others that we've tried before that have done better than these. So Newcastle's schedule, having come in on the tops of our three, uh, is very spotty. EFL Cup second round, you're already out versus Nottingham Forest. I mean, basically win loss, win loss, win loss. You are continuing until the FA Cup fifth round, where you lose out against Bournemouth. Second half of the season, you come up with your first draws, but overall, I mean, not a great performance altogether. Tottenham sitting on the same point tally, pretty much the same. Champions League, let's see how you do. Uh, you are kicked out of the EFL Cup third round, one all against in penalties against Brighton. Uh, FA Cup, you continue on. Champions League, you do move into the round of 16. However, Barcelona kicks you out there. And then FA Cup fifth round, you lose to Liverpool. And Wolves really only three points down, so pretty much the same. A lot of draws in the first half of the season. You got a nice win, 8-1 to one against Tottenham. That is a doozy right there. Uh, you do lose out in the EFL Cup quarterfinals, nil one against Charlton, and then right after, FA Cup fourth round against Everton. Transfers for Newcastle, nothing really big, I mean, that we haven't seen before. Uh, Scrinier, Loftus-Cheek, Boyomo's in there, Trakir, and Vegas. Vegas we get every now and again from CF Monterey, 4.7 million. Tottenham, same pretty much. Uh, Van de Beek, Benjamin Dominguez, Strutalo, and Lugakovic, uh, we've definitely seen before. And same stories with Wolves. Uh, you've got Neto and then Asa Escayo from Sporting. Outs, you do have Daniel Podence to Sassuolo for five and a half. Data Hub-wise, our three teams definitely differed from how FM Tactics Fanatic had his and showed his Data Hub. Uh, right now, it looked like they were fantastic in attack. Uh, defensively, they were pretty good, but made a high number of interceptions per 90, made fewer uh, clearances. Um, so they have, you know, kind of the tops and the bottoms. The sides are a little on the, the negative side. Overall, our three teams definitely look different. Uh, the clearances per game all the way down through tackles. That seems to be on the higher side than the, the tactic itself on the Steam Workshop. Everything in the top bit, not really all that much. Team attacking. Definitely nowhere near as powerful as the PSG team that he used. Uh, definitely a lot closer to Premier League average. 
Premier League stats, though, Newcastle, Tottenham, and Wolves all in there uh, for most goals. Fewer shots against nobody, possession, nobody, dribbles, nobody. And is there, are you back there? There we go. Wolves and Newcastle in most tackles, one. Uh, Tottenham not in there, funny enough. But And then most shots for Tottenham and Newcastle in there. Most points per game, Newcastle and Tottenham tied for seventh, 1.53. Isaac coming in second for uh, most goals with 25. Sun and Sarabi in there with 20 and 19 apiece. Most assists, you got a bunch. Kane, Almiron, uh, Jolinton, I mean, Trippier are all in that list. Fantastic to see there. Most player of the match awards, Sun with seven, Isaac with six, and Almiron with five. Uh, best passing, no. Dribbles, no. You do have some uh, goalkeeping there. Livakovic and Shakir. Most shutouts, nobody. Most tackles, one. Uh, Nunes, Trippier, and Jolinton all in there. Most key passes, Trippier, Porro, and Sarabia. Most shots, Isaac, Son, and Jimenez. You do have a lot of good players in here uh, throughout the list, so that's it's nice to see. It would have been nice to see most dribbles made and then some team stats that didn't just get in there. But overall, uh, if we look at Newcastle, you can see... Top goal scorer is Alexander Isaac with 25. He apparently didn't get any goals in any other competitions. Isaac with 7-3-6. Trippier with 14 assists. And then Isaac with 6 player of the match awards. And then if you look at Newcastle, go to home. Sun with 28 goals. Not too bad. Definitely on the higher side for him. Uh, Sun with 7-4-0 average rating. Kane with 18 assists. Wow, that's really pushing Kane out. Uh, but Sun with 9 player of the match awards. And then if we go to Wolves, go to their home, Pablo Sarabi with 19 goals total in all competitions. Jose Sa with 714 highest average rating. That is fantastic to see. Uh, you don't really see that in a goalkeeper, especially on a team sheet. Uh, but Raul Jimenez, 11 assists, and then Jose Sa, 5 player of the match awards. So Jose Sa really keeping them in the game, in these matches and in the top half of the table. But overall, again... This tactic didn't really do all that much simming-wise. I mean, PSG, you're using PSG. You're going to do fairly well, I would imagine, anyway. Uh, but, you know, we don't have the Liverpool and Man City in this tactic talk. But we are using three Premier League, you know, kind, they're kind of scattered. But even Tottenham is closer to 10 than they are to, you know, three or four. Uh, and then Newcastle and Wolves, obviously. But, um, so there are definitely tactics that we have used before that will be a much better starting point for these three teams. Uh, and again, I mean, who knows though? You take control of these, definitely something that you can pick up a lot of these numbers. Um, I mean, 70 is kind of a, a, the goal, but even that is is kind of hard with this tactic, I would imagine. But who knows? But that is it for me, Sefian FM for the Football Manager Blog channel saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy.